Welcome to our latest video. If this is your first video, your first time joining us, then please do feel free to check out our other videos. We've got the link down below. This week we're thinking all about enrichment and what enrichment means. So Maxine, what is enrichment? Enrichment is anything that we can provide our animals with to keep them stimulated and enrich their lives effectively. Um, a good comparison would be like you guys and YouTube at home or your Xboxes or Playstations. It's stuff that keeps the animals busy. Yeah, so we'll be showing you the five different areas that we have of enrichment and by the end of the video you'll be an expert at being able to plan and assess some enrichment activities as well which you can apply for your animals your pets at home too if you would like to yeah definitely so stay tuned for some awesome footage of different animals enjoying enrichment So there are many different types of animal enrichment that you can use and they fall into five main categories. To start off, we'll have a look at the sensory items. Yeah, so let's think about our senses. We have five different senses, don't we? We've got sight, we've got sound, we've got smell, we've got touch and we've got taste. So we're trying to encourage all of these different things in the animals around the zoo. We've got different boards. See, this feels very rubbery. If you can stretch that, you can feel all the different compartments. It's kind of like a, a honeycomb effect there. You can slather that in paste if you want to so that the animals can sniff it, lick it, feel it, touch it. So the second one is smell. So we've got here some unnatural smells, some unnatural scent that we can spritz and spray around the enclosures to encourage them to have a sniff about and, and have an explore around their enclosure. But we can also use some very stinky food. So fish oil is a really good one for this, isn't it? Because it would definitely encourage them to explore, get them really interested and really excited. So we've done touch, we've done smell, Taste is a really easy one for the keepers to do because there's all sorts of tastes that they can explore. Um, Maxine's got a funny story actually with a bit of video that we can show you about Ralph the raccoon. Yeah, we've treated, with all the donations that we've had through lockdowns, we've had an amazing smorgasbord of food donated. And uh, for our raccoons, we've made not only banana splits, but we also made a full English breakfast for Ralph the raccoon as well. So that was quite a sensory, overload enrichment day for Ralph the Raccoon. Excellent. So that's three of them now. We've now got sound. So we can use different sorts of sounds in the animal's enclosure and I'm going to put a pin in that one because we'll actually show you what we've done with sound later on in this video. Okay, so our last one is sight. So for sight, we can do things using torches and mirrors. We can send reflections in different areas of the enclosure to encourage them to, again, explore, think about things, and it helps to stimulate those senses. So those are our five sensory ones. What's next on our agenda? It's important to say that we can always mix these enrichments, so it's not always just food or just sensory. So a lot of my food-based enrichments will probably involve these sensory things as well. Um, so an example of a food-based enrichment, just at the very basic level, is just basically down to presentation of food. Um, so as you can probably imagine, if I throw a singular carrot into the goat's paddock, it will get eaten very, very quickly. Whereas if I chop it up into lots of little pieces and scatter it, it will take a lot longer for the goats to go around, search for the bits of carrot and then eat them. So this takes them longer. So if you're wanting to keep them occupied and keep them busy, chopping up the food really small and spreading it around is a really good way of enriching them. But sometimes it's nice for them to battle with a full-sized vegetable as well. Other examples of food-based enrichment involves hiding the food in items. Um, this is a very popular um, it's, it's built for like hoof stock, so 
horses and, and goats and, and hardier animals because it's solid. And it's got a little hole in the top there. So what we can do is put these bits of chopped food inside of there. So the animal has to think about it. It's like a cognitive thinking about it. They have to push it around in order to get the food to drop out of the hole. Um, so that again takes them a lot longer. You might recognize one of these, particularly if you've got a pet dog at home. So these are really, really good. And a lot of these were actually donated from our Amazon wish list as well. So thank you very much to everybody who's donated. And what you can do with these is again, you can just put some food in, you can put some paste or you can put some hard bits of food in. And it's up to the animal then to figure out how to get it out. Um, another example of uh, a type of enrichment that you can use uh, for food-based enrichment but also ticks the cognitive box because they have to think about it is like puzzle feeders like this. Um, so we have a raven called Rowena um, who's very intelligent and she'll look at this and instantly just start pulling these out and inside these little holes there'll be little treats or things like that and yeah she can figure that out instantly but she's a very intelligent animal. Other animals that are not as intelligent, this would take them quite some time to figure out. So we always try and match the level of enrichment with the species that we're putting it in with. Um, and we also have to think about the safety considerations as well. Um, like for example, I wouldn't put this in with the porcupines because the porcupines would eat it. Um, and I don't know what's in this bits of wood here that I wouldn't want them to eat it. So you've always got to have those considerations before giving your animals them. Um, at the front here, I have got this, which is a bit of an unusual enrichment. I'm sure you might recognize it as an item from the house. What do you think we might do with this, Sarah? I think potentially we can hang different bits of items of food there for them to get a good sniff at and work out, figure out how to uh, remove it from this device here. Yeah, definitely. So that's exactly right. So we have a lot of animals that in the wild would naturally be browsers, which means that they eat from the bushes and they eat from the trees. So they're eating at this height like this. They're not used to eating from a bowl down here. So by hanging this in the enclosure and hanging leaves of food off of it, it makes the animals duplicate that behavior of uh, actually browsing in bushes and trees. Um, so we do this for the tortoises, we do it for the wallabies, um, we do it for all the leafy kind of animals that can't injure themselves with this. Absolutely, because enrichment is about that blend of natural behaviors and play behaviors as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. Um, so food-based enrichment, you can also do things like um, Sarah mentioned before doing smears on these type of things, but you can also just go around the enclosure and smear things on trees, smear things on bushes, and just make little trails for them to follow. Um, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, this is just a tip of the iceberg, really. Now, the other categories of enrichment that we don't, we can't physically show you on this table involve environmental enrichment. So what do you think environmental enrichment means? So I think environmental enrichment encourages the animals to use the environment that they have around them, perhaps in different ways or perhaps in the natural way that they might use their environment. Yeah, so basically it's exactly what we provide here at the zoo. So it's an enclosure built around a tree. So an animal that naturally likes to climb trees who's arboreal, it's providing them with a tree so they can climb a tree. Um, so that's the very basic of environmental enrichment. But it's also down to things like your types of substrate and your ground. So it's whether it's bark chip, whether it's sand so that they can dig, whether it's pebbles so they can faff with pebbles, or if they have a pond, you know, there's so many different things to consider with environmental. Um, so that's quite an easy one to tick if you've built your enclosure properly. The next type of category is social enrichment. What does that mean? So social enrichment might be thinking about how many of each animal that you put in and whether those animals are related in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it might be, for example, our meerkat mob. Yeah. The meerkat mob is made up of a big family group, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but some of the animals that we have at the zoo are what we call solitary animals. So we have an enclosure just for that one animal and that's how they prefer to live at the zoo. Yeah, that's it. But the other thing that you can think about from a social aspect is mixed species. Yeah. So exhibits where we have multiple different species in the same enclosure can be enriching. Um, so, you know, we have our skunk and our tree porcupine mixed together, so they're in the same enclosure. Um, you know, and it's, it's only in exhibits where it's suitable. Obviously you wouldn't mix certain species together because they would fight, but if they come from the same habitat and they can coexist happily, then that can be also quite rewarding.
Now that we've had a look at all the different types of enrichment, we've actually already planned out an enrichment uh, that we want to do with our Arctic boxes. Yeah, so we know that the behaviour that we're actually wanting to achieve is this diving behaviour and we've seen a really good video from another zoo. So we thought, why not have a go and we've got all of this material here that we're going to put together, show you how to create that and at the end we'll see whether or not it was effective and you can have a go at assessing that with us as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the behaviour that the Arctic foxes do in the wild is they're obviously where they come from, it's really, really snowy and the snow is really deep. And the prey that they want to eat is under the snow at certain times of the year. So they have their little ears and they hone in on it. And then what they do is they dive on it. So they probably jump up in the air and dive on it. So our kind of thinking was behind this enrichment is what we can do is we can recreate the sound of the prey via the speaker and uh, the help of YouTube um, and put this in the box and obviously protect it from the Arctic boxes using this cardboard material. So what we'll do, uh, because this isn't the most cheapest enrichment in the world, <laughs> is we will protect it inside of this Hessian sack. Put it inside the box. And we try and recycle things as much as possible at the zoo, don't we? Recycling is super important. I'm sure it is at home as well. So we're just going to stuff that in there, give it a really good press down. So we're wanting to make it as exciting and as enticing as possible. Yeah, and what's really nice about this uh, chopped up cardboard is the fact that it's so soft. So if the fox does jump into it, he's not going to injure himself when he's doing it. Um, now, Arctic foxes, the, some of the considerations that we have to make about this enrichment is the fact that Arctic foxes are very naughty and they will literally try and eat anything. So they're not allowed to be left unattended with this. Um, and because he will literally just start eating it. So we'll see how he goes and we'll see if the behavior is created. What we would like you guys to do is go onto our website and download our enrichment evaluation sheet. This is actually the sheet that we actually use here at the zoo um, and this is how we can assess whether or not an enrichment is successful or not and whether or not it's worth reproducing again. On the front of the sheet there's also a planning side as well. Yeah, absolutely. And last week you would have watched our video about what a keeper does each day. So this is your turn now to tune in and think like a keeper by filling this sheet in and observing what happens with our arctic foxes. Yeah, so let's go down. Let's take this down. We're going to go with our keeper Charlotte and we're going to head down to the arctic foxes now and, uh, and see what Hamish thinks of our enrichment. We'll meet you there. Cool. I'm just going to put this rock in the bottom of the box to make sure that um, he doesn't just carry it off because it's quite a small one. So he might just grab it with his teeth and be off. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
is not tickable. Welcome back. We hope that you enjoyed watching Hamish play with the box that we put in for him. Obviously the enrichment behaviour that we had been seeking of the pouncing behaviour didn't really work out, but that doesn't mean that it was a complete fail of enrichment. And that's simply because, you know, it took him time, it let him think about things, I think he enjoyed it, he got really confused about sounds, uh, which was quite cute to see. Um, but that means all we need to do now is we need to go back to the drawing board and have a little rethink about how we can try and recreate that natural behaviour. Absolutely. You probably noticed from watching that video as well when you filled out your assessment that you didn't see that pouncing behaviour that we mentioned, but you did see lots of other behaviours and you'll find that, I'm sure, with your pets. It's okay to go back again and have another try, have another think and, and fix some of those areas that might need to be fixed. Yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully you guys have learned all about enrichment the five different types. We look forward to welcoming you next week. Next week, we're going to be learning all about colors. If you haven't already, guys, please do subscribe to our channel and like this video. Um, we would really, really appreciate it. And obviously, we would love to see if you guys have taken part in any of our lessons. Please do email us at learning at northumberlandzoo.co.uk with any of your completed worksheets that you've done. And we would love to feature them in next week's episode. Um, but until then, we shall see you next week. Bye.